Hi, I'm John Troyer. I'm here live at VMworld 2010. It's Thursday, last day of the conference. I think this is the last session we'll be filming. I uh, really appreciate you. If, if you've been watching, we've been having a good time here. We're here in the Bloggers Lounge. Everybody is um, looking a little mite relaxed and very full of uh, conference today. My name is John Troyer. I work on the social media team. Uh, we're here every week with the Communities Podcast, every Wednesday at noon California time. So check us out. We couldn't do that this week, so we thought we'd bring together a few of the V experts for a final uh, perspective on the conference. V the experts are the V Expert program is our advocacy and evangelism program here at VMware. We've we've designated 300 people as some of the best evangelists, knowledgeable folks that go above and beyond beyond their day jobs to blog, to write books, to to lead VMugs, to really. Um, uh, spread the spread their knowledge to the to other folks. It's it's really valuable what you guys do. So thank you very much for everything you do. Um, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, and a little bit about you. Okay, hey, uh, I'm Stuart Radnage. I run the vinternals.com blog. Um, based out of the UK, working for a global investment bank. My name is Mike Laverick. I run the RTFM education website. Uh, run wrote a couple of books about VMware, and I have a regular kind of podcast with people from the virtualization community, including Steve last time. And I'm Justin Emerson. I work for a VMware partner, and I uh, run the uh, VM Junkie blog. Great, thanks. So I thought this was a good VM world. I thought this was an excellent VM world. What did you guys think, in general? Yeah, I think um, I think for me the biggest, uh, this is my first VM world US. Awesome. Um, and first time in San Francisco, beautiful city. And um, But I, th I think the real value for um, people like myself and Mike, uh, based out of the UK, is um, actually getting a chance to meet people face to face, you know, have have conversations with product managers and engineers that, that we would never get an opportunity to do otherwise. Um, that and and the other thing I think is really good is just the um, you know conglomeration of uh, vendors on the on the solutions exchange. Um, you know, you, ne you never really get any other opportunities to have such a concentration of so many different vendors where you can go around and, and have them show you their stuff um, in a short space of time. So. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I mean, I would second that too. I think there was a bit of anxiety, I think, this year about with the Copenhagen event being so close to this event. And I think that's probably uh, convinced some people in uh, EMEA that they'll attend the Copenhagen event but not come here. But, I mean, personally, I find VMworld is the one time in the year where I can actually meet with my US chums who you're in constant contact through, you know, Twitter or Facebook or maybe you're doing an interview or podcast, but just meeting people physically, that you can't get away from the value of that still. Mm -hmm. I mean, I must admit, this is my eighth VM world, both if you count the EU, the EU ones and the US ones, and I think in the last couple of years, I've really stopped doing the breakout sessions, which is, I kind of miss, but it's it's the people you bump into and meet. So uh, at the CTO uh, party, I managed to call us Scott Davis, the PM for View, and talk about a book I'm writing on VMware View and do that kind of thing. I just wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't here. So being here is really, really important. And year on year, you're building a relationship with people. It's like, hey, Mike, and I saw you last year and the year before, year before. If you missed one, it's like, where's where's Mike gone? Where's Stu gone? So it, it really was important this year, above any other, really, to make sure I was here, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Justin, how'd you think? What? It's the most virtual time of the year. It's, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love it so much. I, I've been, this is, uh, I think, my fifth. Um, and what's interesting for me is I've been here both as a customer and then now as a partner. Um, and the, the, the conference provides really different things for different types of people. Um, personally now, both as a partner and as somebody active in the community, I mean, Mike, you hit on the head, it's really about the people. Um, you know, I, I could come here and go to the breakout sessions, and I still do, and some of them are really interesting, but a lot of my time is now spent meeting people, checking out new, new technologies, new partners, um, and meeting with, you know, some of the people internally at VMware that, uh, you know, unless you're, you're, you're living in Palo Alto all the time, you really don't get to see. So I, I think it's, it's great. It's probably the most valuable conference that I go to every year. Great. Well, one of the, one of the new areas, we talked a lot about cloud uh, here at uh, the show. Um, vFabric, we hit on a little bit, uh, application frameworks for the cloud. But end user computing was also one of the, the main topics uh, that we talked about. And we released View 4.5. We previewed some things. Justin, what did you think about end user computing here at the show? Well, end user computing has kind of been personally one of my focuses for a long time. Through my blog, I post a lot about virtual desktop stuff. And I think that, you know, part of the whole name change to end user computing really shows a shift in the focus and the thinking. Because we used to be talking about desktop virtualization. Exactly, but it's not about the desktop anymore. You know, what, what's a virtual desktop, right? There's, you know, a desktop's a location. It's not a thing, if you think about it. So um, I think it's a, it's a really interesting step seeing a lot of the 
Project Horizon stuff is, is really, really exciting, um, where Ex it really becomes application -centric. Explain what Project Horizon was. So Project Horizon is a uh, kind of a new way of doing application delivery that helps to merge together software as a service, as well as traditional Windows applications, uh, other types of web applications, things like that, and puts them in a, in, a, in a way to provision and deploy applications to a user, no matter what device they're from. So if they're from an iPad or if they're from their desktop, things like that. It's really, really interesting stuff. And the, and the demo that they did on Tuesday was really impressive. And are you currently working with 4.5? Point, you view 4.5? Yeah, so I, I actually got to play around with the, the beta of 4.5. It's really exciting. Um, I know a lot of people were up, uh, frustrated that it got delayed and things like that. But, you know, talking to some of the people, you know, they said that, look, the reason why it was pushed out is because we wanted to make sure that this release was solid. And talking to a lot of the product managers, they said, you know, we're the most proud of this release than any of the previous view releases that we've done. And it, and it really shows from the code. And, you know, when you tell customers that, you know, they, they pushed it off a little bit in order to make it really, really good. Usually they're okay with that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really positive message. VMware has a tradition of under-promising and over-delivering, and I hope that we continue that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's better to do it that way than the other yeah. way around. So Mike, you're actually working on a View 4.5 book, and so you were also in the beta. So what did you think of the show in general and, and View in particular? Or, or yeah, I, I've been involved in the beta for, I guess it must be nearly six months now, and um, I, would, I would concur with what you just said. I think previous releases of uh, VMware View and VDM as it was, um, I didn't feel that there was a level of complexity and sophisticatedness, if that's a word, it is now, um, that kind of warranted my kind of involvement in the product from a kind of uh, writing one of my RTFM guides. But looking at the, the distribution in beta and then the release candidates, it, it felt for me like a tipping point of being released where I felt it's now time for me to write about this in such a way that wouldn't be patronizing to somebody you know, next, next, next kind of thing. And I'm, the view product hasn't lost any of its simplicity or ease of deployment in exchange for that level of great complexity hmm. okay. and flexibility. And that's actually quite a difficult thing to achieve. Yeah, anybody that's ever created software that's tried to be both simple and powerful knows that, yeah. Sure, yeah. but for me, the big thing wasn't, I was surprised how little fanfare there was around uh, view. Um, and maybe that was because of the kind of, bit of a rocky water that it's been through. Um, so what I'm really excited about is the vCloud director technology um, because that's been such a super secret beta program. I, I don't know anyone except like the top main providers like Verizon and others who are in Redwood. So it's been on the agenda for everybody for I would say nearly a year, but very few of us have actually been able to actually use it and touch it. So I'm looking forward to finishing the view thing and get my hands on the yeah. cloud director thing as soon as I can because I think for somebody like I, I see myself as a kind of mature virtualization person and I'm sure Stu and you guys feel the same way it's not new to us this technology and we're looking to like push things to another level you know great great well that does bring us to cloud uh, Stu you're a cloud guy you built your own private cloud you know you've been working on it I mean cloud is really not a technology it's an operational stance it's a it's a lot of things um, and I don't want to get into what is cloud it's a paradigm um, although I want to get the video it's a pizza I want to get the video that we started off the keynote with because ah. I thought that was brilliant uh, even though we've already been over what is cloud a lot of it, cloud is like a pizza that you order yeah. um, but Stu what do you think of it or, what, or t just talk about cloud in general yeah, um, I mean, I, I think the best uh, description of cloud I've ever heard was that it's a um, it's a bit like security. It's not a binary state. It's a, it's a continuum. It's a it's a journey, if you will. Um, and so, in that respect, yeah, I was really you know really really glad to see vCloud Director finally um, finally make it out there. Um, a couple of months ago, I I was invited to come over here as part of the beta program, but unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Um, and you know, I think I think the the really important thing around vCloud Director is the partnership that VMware is is engaging with with these uh, external cloud providers, um, and, and this is something I would strongly recommend anyone who works for a large enterprise like I do um, to to do the same thing. Get out there and, and talk to the partners um, because when you're when you're developing an internal cloud or a private cloud or whatever you want to call it, um, it it is pretty important to make sure that it looks. You know, it, it doesn't look too different from an external cloud because you, you're just going to help yourself in terms of you know workload portability and uh, interoperability and that kind of stuff. So, really looking forward to um, getting my hands dirty. I, I did the lab, uh, the labs for vCloud Director and labs team. 
I, I won't swear, but unbelievably awesome uh, job. To, that that is just mind blowing. Uh, uh, the stuff they set up. Can I ju just yeah. add to that? I think uh, I don't know whether this has sort of gone under the ra radar, but I think um, VMware's alignment with Verizon is is huge. I it's really really huge to have a mainstream yeah. uh, people out on the street recognize this as a brand uh, partner. Um, I think that's really really big, and I was surprised how there wasn't more kind of a. <gasps> Verizon are involved, you know. I think that's one of the the things that slipped in there. There was a lot of news. We're so used to being a product company, but this vCloud data center services that we just launched with these major partners, uh, I think is, you know, that'll take a while for people to sink in because this is really the, the folk, the industrial strength. This is not your, your this is not your little booksellers. Um, this is not the Amazon cloud. <laughs> cloud. This is this is industrial strength cloud. Yeah, I mean, what I would say about Verizon in particular is one of the most common analogies for the cloud is it should be regarded like the telephone service. You pick up the telephone, the call gets made. You don't have to worry about all the interconnects. And I said to somebody, well, it's kind of blowed back the other way. Now we have a major commerce provider <laughs> who's going to provide us with a virtualization environment. So maybe they are the best guys to do it because they're kind of already doing that for for comms infrastructure. I mean, I, I, that's a very throwaway kind of thing to say, but uh, you know, the analogy has been there and I think it's one they, that we They certainly play understand with. SLAs, yeah. you know, they're about five nights. And, and I thought, you know, there were, two, there were two things. One, I think it was really interesting how the keynote on Tuesday had so much content in it, and yet it was all really subdued. Like, you know, VMware announced that they made two acquisitions, and that was completed with a, and by the way, we've also acquired this company, Tricipher. Okay, now let's go back, you know, it was like no, no pomp and circumstance, no fanfare, it was very matter of fact, like this is why we're doing this, this is the direction that we're going. And, and to add to that, you know, I think it was really cool to see that VMware's whole vCloud, or, or just cloud strategy, covers a lot of the different stratum of cloud types. Yeah. You've not only got the strategy around vCloud Director, which in and of itself is a huge step forward, which is targeting kind of the infrastructure as a service, but you had the announcements around vFabric and around platform as a service. One of the biggest announcements, I think, was that they are collaborating with Google to make those compatible in the Google uh, Cloud with their stuff. That's really, really important, and that drives home the message of portability that VMware's been trying to uh, evangelize. And then also playing in software as a service with Zimbra and other pieces like that. So it's really clear that VMware doesn't just see the cloud as one type of service. You know, as, as Stu said, it's an operational model and whether that model is at a software layer, at a platform layer, or at an infrastructure layer, they've got a clear strategy laid out for that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I remember uh, last week I did a podcast with some of the guys from Tech Target and they're asking me, you know, what, what did I expect to see out of VMworld? And I thought, that's pretty much uh, public. But uh, before we drink the Kool-Aid too much, I think we all agree that the cloud isn't delivered as a 1.0 product on Tuesday of next week. It's, I've often thought this project for the cloud is, is like the journey to the moon. It's a long-term venture and maybe we're in geostationary orbit right now or doing the first exploratory loops around the moon in preparation for landing to it. And it's a multidisciplinary process which doesn't just involve VMware, it involves partners and providers mm -hmm. but other platforms as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've got user groups in the UK a lot and a lot of people will say to me, oh well I won't take this seriously until there's a 2.0 uh, product and I'm like, you haven't really understood what it is this thing is about because it's not going to be delivered in a single instance shrink wrap package for every single business anyway. Yeah. Two last things, uh, you mentioned that we mentioned the keynote. Two last things we've already <laughs> mentioned, let's, let's cover it slightly real quick and then I think we're about done. You mentioned the keynote. I thought the keynote was excellent this year. It's definitely worth uh, 90 minutes of your time to watch. It was well put together, it's a story. S some people thought the Paul section Paul, was kind of slow. I thought, listen to what that man's saying. He, it's a very, it's a complicated story, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's, there's some deep wisdom there. I thought, and I thought the really amazing thing was, especially following along, because you know we're all sitting there on our on Twitter and, and our blogs while while he's doing yeah, his yeah. keynote, and I'm list, wa I'm, you know, hearing, uh, all everyone else's reactions, and I thought a really interesting reaction was from the Brian Madden guys, where they were saying that, uh, you know. Paul just forecasted the death of the w traditional Windows application and the and the death of Windows as a uh, as a key um, you know part of the stack, right? Because what he was saying was that the operating system as it existed up until this point has 
kind of become irrelevant because what was it supposed to do? It's supposed to provide APIs to applications and manage the underlying hardware. And now it really does neither of those because you have frameworks on the top and you have virtualization on the bottom. And that's why that part of the keynote to me was really, really impressive from a, from a strategy perspective because it was like, that's that's a really powerful claim to be making while at the same time trying to but be he did not claim now just to be clear I also saw some tweets from some from from some skeptics that were saying oh they said that oh, operating systems are going away well what's gonna be running on all those VMs he did not say that at all no. he just said that the innovation is happening elsewhere exactly. I mean I, I you just I mean we've known that for 10 years how much time more time do you spend on your browser than do you spend on a Windows app I mean that just and, kinda, and his message happening. was that this was gonna happen with or without VMware I like that that, too. It's, yes. that it's yeah, that it was yeah. a this is a this is a a, a shift and momentum is going that direction and no one particular company is going to, uh, I mean, you may be able to, you know, push the, the asteroid a little bit out of, uh, change its trajectory, but you're not going to stop it from, from hitting its target, right. right? It's going in that direction. I mean, I'd like to say that I, I actually enjoyed the general session that we had this morning about innovation. It was such a relief to have something that wasn't cloud, 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 virtualization, <laughs> but it was, you know, stuff that really... Right doesn't really directly relate to what VMware does, but it was really entertaining, and it was really an eye-opener on some of the kind of crazy stuff that could come through. So that was, I actually joined it because it was kind of a light relief to the It was good, the for, good for Thursday morning, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Especially if I had a few beers the night before. <laughs> hey, one, one last thing real quick. We talked about the labs. Labs were big news at this show. Um, did you all go, did you guys all take advantage of the labs? I didn't yeah. get time. Ah. Yeah. I'd, yeah, I did definitely. So, g summarize real quick uh, what was. I mean, we had we had the lab guys on here a little earlier. We did something like uh, 125,000 VMs were created and destroyed. Uh, I it was forget. One guy did all the labs. Yeah, yeah. one guy did yeah. 30 yeah. labs. So, uh, explain yeah. I think the what? last last thing Duncan yeah. said was that they've done 13,000 labs yeah, yeah. completed. Yeah, 12 and a half yeah. thousand. Yeah, 12 and a half. Which compares to last year when you were trying to you you might have gotten re reserved for two labs and an instructor yeah. base you know an instructor base part. Uh, they, they meet their their uh, number of labs done at VMworld last year, they met that in a day and a half. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, but this was this was an impressive thing. I mean, do you want to talk about it? Just yeah, um, I mean, it, everything from, um, you know, we, we were fortunate that you could organize the, um, a, a tour uh, given by the architects of the lab infrastructure um, on Sunday uh, before the conference began. And and just amazing in terms of the, you know, the, the software that was developed to profile what labs people were doing so that they could then, you know, sort of pre-provision uh, labs in accordance with what the demand profile looked like. Um, and I mean, the infrastructure itself, just incredibly resilient. You, you, know, you had your on, odd site data center here, one in uh, what, Miami, one in? Uh, one in Miami, one in uh, Virginia. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the infrastructure was... And the same data centers are going to be used for Copenhagen. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, the, the infrastructure and, and, and the ability to completely isolate any one and have the other two running, it was, I mean, I, I work for a bank. It looked like the kind of stuff I deal with. and. Uh, yeah, it was. It, it was, was a real very cloud, cool. a real proof yeah, point for it cloud. Was, definitely. Um, great. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for being here today. It's Thursday. It's all time to go home. Uh, I think we've all learned a lot. I've, I'm ready to go home and take a break. Uh, I'm John Troyer. I will be here uh, next Wednesday on the pod community podcast. Uh, we're there. <laughs> we're there every week, rain or shine. Um, or cloudy. The, or cloudy. <laughs> exactly. I'm feeling pretty cloudy these days. So I would like to uh, thank my guests, uh, Stu and Mike and Justin, all the experts. Uh, but you'll see us, you know, come around blogs.vmware.com or, you know, we're all over the place. So thanks. Uh, thanks. Thank you, John. Bye. Thanks a lot. <laughs>